Okay, good evening. Tonight's shir is uh, talking about checking for uh, insects uh, in fruits and vegetables. Uh, I thought that uh, because uh, today was Tu Vishvat, that we should uh, discuss a little dry fruits. That will be kind of the end of this year. Uh, but we'll just uh, do a little chazar of uh, some of the sources we saw in the uh, first section on checking for bugs. So first of all, there's a whole discussion. I thought the, uh, the line of the Archa Shochan is the famous Archa Shochan. talks about lo nitna uh, Torah l'malach yasharis. The idea that the Torah was not given to angels. And therefore, Karsh Baruch, when he tells us not to eat bugs, he obviously understands that uh, we're only held accountable for that which is visible to the eye. Things which are only visible through a microscope, through a microscope or some sort of, uh, you know, uh, high lens, uh, high, you know, high lens. So that's not, not what we're looking for. Uh, you know, he, the, the sources say that, uh, the scientists tell us that today, if you open your mouth, you're just breathing air. So there could be uh, microscopic bugs that are coming into your mouth. So we're not going to be held accountable for that based on the constant law, nitna Torah, ella, the Torah wasn't given to angels, that we're, we're human beings, we have to try our best. That being said, we still have to try to uh, improve. So uh, one of the questions that's often asked about this topic is, Lenny, when you were a kid, did your, uh, was there a whole sugi about checking for bugs in your fruits and veggies? Did your mother ever talk about uh, how to wash the lettuce? Did they have primers? That they did. They, they, they did do? Did they check for bugs with the strawberries? Did they eat strawberries and raspberries? Well, strawberries was not a thing. wasn't a thing back then. Right, that's the class. That's interesting here. I don't, I don't know if growing up with lettuce, I knew about checking, you know, for bugs in general. I think really I became more aware of it uh, when I went to Israel. Then again, I was in Shiva. In Shiva, they probably just took care of it and didn't talk about it. Um, or they just let us eat the bugs, and that explained a lot. But uh, the point is that uh, we should try to improve as, uh, as we learn more. But in the footnote, he pointed out something. He said, first of all, the post do talk about it. Just because you didn't know about it doesn't mean that it wasn't. Uh, the the, the post do talk about it. Archa uh, you know, wrote about it in the, in the uh, earlier part of the, of the century. So it's not a new, a new, a new halacha. Something the OU primer uh, brought up is the fact that um, the USDA used to use a lot more pesticides. And with the use of pesticides, a lot of the bug problems were taken care of by the pesticides. What was it called? Right, the, the uh, what does it stand for? I don't know what it stands for. It's not but they were, they were trying to they, they eliminate the insects. But then the government recently, in the last number of years, started banning and, and reducing the amount of this chemical that's used. And therefore, the proliferation of bugs has become a, big, a bigger problem in recent years because of the that's lack of these pesticides. And that's why organic foods is actually the biggest problem. So if someone in your family uh, specifically likes organic foods, they're actually the biggest problem of infestations. You have to, they have to be checked uh, the most, the most uh, carefully. Okay. Uh, there's also another important point that he, that he mentions, that the way produce is purchased um, changes so quickly because we're a, a culture that everyone wants every fruit all year round. And therefore, the source of where people are getting from is constantly changing from season to season, from month to month even. And therefore, if in one season your strawberries or whatever you're, you're checking didn't have a problem, don't think, oh, because that month or that batch it was okay. Because the way, especially in America where we want everything at all times available to us, therefore, produce is coming from uh, all different backgrounds. I think you notice the mo most when you go to Costco, you notice the blueberry box and the strawberry box constantly changing where the packaging has come from because... Uh, where the supplier uh, changes from time, time to time. Okay, um, another interesting uh, thing that uh, maybe some people were aware of, so I know that uh, many, many are machmer. Next week we'll talk about the kind of like which, uh, which things are not, you know, are they're considered mukhsak but we'll talk about the different categories of like what was considered infested. Let's say, for example, raspberries, blackberries, those are things which are uh, in the category of mukhsak but But we saw in the sources that if it's, the, the, the biggest problem is only when they're whole. I know it doesn't uh, sound great, but if they're crushed, so it's not a barrier. A barrier, a whole entity, we say is chashuv, and a barrier, a whole entity, we say is not batal because it's like eating a whole ant, eating a whole fly, whatever it is, so it has a chashivas to it. But if it's crushed up, so uh, then it's less of a problem, and we can apply the, the laws of bitzel. And as gross as that sounds, that's why even if you're makbid mach, 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 not to have raspberries or blackberries in your home, you can still get a, a raspberry or blackberry smoothie because in, this, you know, the, in the blending process, so then they crush them up and, the, and that, that's okay. And that's why there is this heter. Still, even if uh, this kasha has come up to me, can, people ask me, can I go to, uh, I don't know what they're called, but in the mall you have these uh, non, I don't know what, juice. jamba juice, whatever, something where they make these, uh, can I order a raspberry smoothie without a heksher? So uh, just doing my, you know, I do, doing some homework. Uh, the, the girls ask me my notes all the, all the time. Just learning about today, though, there is a problem we call aim about an iser You're not allowed to do something specifically, intentionally, in order to 
to create halachic loophole. So in this case, we, we, one is not supposed to rely on the idea that, that blended or chopped up bugs is okay, lechatzchila. Ideally, one is supposed to check even your raspberries and strawberries. It's only bidding Evid after you've already checked, and the assumption is there's probably nothing there. Then, in the case that you missed something and there was a bug, then you can assume that it was chopped up in the blender. I heard you guys talking about do blenders actually get it? But even with, with the discussion, like do blenders actually get every bug? You're st- because of aim of Adlan Isra Lechatzchila, one is still supposed to check before you do it. So, as best as one can, one would slice the strawberry, do whatever, whatever the, the books say about how, how to try to check once you first try to check, and then after that. So I, I'm not a big fan of, I, I, I can't say in good faith you can just go buy a Jamba Juice a raspberry smoothie because there's no way they're, they're doing any type of t- sort of checking before. Again, Bidi uh, there's actually a Shiloh, Bidi Ebed by those which are Muchzak Betulai, whether you can even rely on Bidi Ebed. But again, maybe it wasn't raspberry, the ones which are really, you know, really infested. Maybe it was blueberry. Blueberries, I think, are not as, as bad. So that blueberries probably would be less of a problem. I think blueberries would, would be a less of an issue. But to get a raspberry smoothie at one of these places would be, would be not, definitely not rabbinically advisable. Okay, so let's, let's move on to, uh, to dried fruit. Okay, so in honor of uh, Tu Bishvat. So the question by dried fruit uh, is uh, a little bit more complicated in the sense that dried fruit, there are two, there are two issues. Basically, the Rambam writes as follows. The Ram writes a double thing. He says, pri achar or chodesh. If the pre has been uh, out of the ground, it's been uh, uprooted for right 12 months, ochel below bedika. The Ram says you can eat them even without checking. She'ein tolash shabomit kayemet shnei masar chodesh. The Rambam says that any worms or any, infants, any insects which might be in the fruit do not last 12 months. And this concept is based on uh, this is Dr. Chuba writes also, that essentially, it's, this also sounds grotesque, but no bugs can survive six months in a fruit which is detached. I guess they need some nutrients, they need some water, they can't survive inside the bug that's already detached. So if it's already detached, in the drying process, they, of course, they already detach them when they start to dry them. So the bugs will die after six months. And the shidra, the bones and the gidra of the bugs, they, they also dissolve after a year meaning a year from the, from the start, when they're detached. So basically, any dried fruit that, 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 that's that been dry, in the drying process for, for a year, again, I didn't look exactly what the how long the drying process takes, but the implication is it's that it's from the time it's detached from the ground until it gets to your stomach, is, is, that, the implication was it's over a year, and therefore, according to the Rambam, one would not need to uh, check it. This is a big kula. It means that any dried fruit you wouldn't need to check. So apparently the rush disagreed with this with this Rambam and the Shochar Paskin like the rush that one should uh, should ideally check for uh, check for uh, bugs. The Taz wrote also uh, in defense of the Rambam. The Taz writes that this is really a sfex feka. One suffix is you don't know if uh, if there's any bugs inside the the dried fruit. This is a second suffix is and this is the second part of the Rambam's kula is that it. Well, in our sugi, we're talking about shratzim. Shratzim are bugs that are creepy crawlers. Again, I don't know where the infestation comes from, but this is what the OU article on dry fruit said, is that any bug which originates inside the fruit that has not yet exited the fruit is actually you could eat that, that the bug. The only bugs that are considered creepy crawlers that are usser are the ones that have, that have left the fruit at some point. Again, I don't really get it. Are the bugs born in the fruit? I don't know why they're, what the scenario is that they, yeah, right, right. Where, is it, are they laying eggs in the fruit? The, it, it doesn't explain it, but it has to be that there's some sort of uh, laying of eggs. And those, those bugs are basically not, it sounds gross, but are not subject, they're not considered shratzim on the, on the, on, uh, in terms of halakhic hal- level. So the, so the sfex fake of the taz is, one, we don't know if there are bugs there or not, and even if there were bugs, they might not be what we would call biblical, biblical shratzim. So based on this, the taz also felt like the ramam, that one does not need to check for dry fruits. The prima gadim says there's a big distinction. The prima gadim says that that's, that's all nice when you, there's no, uh, not, it's not after levar, there's no way to check. But if in this case you can just cut, slice it open and just check, see if there are bugs, and then going back to our early discussion, and uh, when we say see if there are bugs, it means someone with decent eyesight. If I were to take up my glasses, I can't see anything. So for me to say, oh, there are no bugs, I can't see, so how would I know? It means someone who has proper vision. 20, 20, whatever the whatever is considered proper vision, whoever is with good. Glasses, it would be fine. Yeah, with your glasses, fine. But you can't say, oh, I took up my glasses, I can't see. It means a, a proper, a proper, proper vision.
So, so the prima karma says we shouldn't rely on the taz. One should just uh, slice open and uh, and check and see if it's there. If there are no bugs, then then you're good to go. Uh, essentially, uh, I looked at the star K, the CRC, and the OU, and I learned as follows: the OU and the star K basically both say that in there uh, there is some sort of kind of. Uh, Process. I'll just read, read it. It says, all use, OU certified dried fruit plants have HAACP programs that focus on maintaining a clean environment. I looked up what this is. It's some sort of like, like guidelines of how do you create um, a sanitary. It's basically standard. There's like certain protocols that to have a standard cleanliness. So the OU is basically saying all of their certified places have that. Uh, and based on that, the chances of infestation developing is highly unlikely and checking by end consumers is not necessary. Right, so I guess the question would be like this, this was CRC, but according to this, if it came from their facility, then they were they they made sure it was sanitary, and uh, I think the CRC, the second one of them, says that they're kept in a very cold climate. The cool climate, uh, you know, prevents uh, uh, infestation, and you can you can rely on that. Now, the CRC or one of the agencies said that they can only guarantee until it gets to the store. Some stores, let's say if it's in, again in a plastic box, it's probably harder for bugs to get in. But uh, I know that my mother was just telling me that she had some uh, issue in the house, that she had some stuff from Pesach from last year that uh, some insects or rodents got into because it was in a cardboard box. So again, it also depends on the packaging. You have to make sure the packaging is a packaging that nothing, nothing can get in. It seems to be that um, anything which ha- that, that things should have a heksher, ideally. Um, and then what the CRC writes, or this is, maybe this is archaic, I apologize for getting confused, is that again, it goes back to what we'll discuss next, which are the categories. If we're talking about something which is muhsak bitalim, your strawberries, your, your raspberries, things which are, are known to have high infestation, so then those things should be checked. You shouldn't, you shouldn't buy without a heksher. And probably when, you, and, and, and said, for example, dates. When you open a date, even if you had a heksher, you should just check one. See, slice it in half, see if there are any bugs, if there, even, even if it was from, uh, with an OU. If there are no bugs, then you're good to go. But there are some, uh, there are certain uh, fruits that are known not to have infestation. And then for those, let's say dried mango. I don't think dried mango is not, is not one of those which are, which are most up with tulayim. So dried mango would not need, again, don't quote me on the mango part, because there's a, look on the CRCS list, each dried fruit. But the ones, when I looked at the list, I noticed the ones which are classically more known to have, prone to have bugs, those are the ones that they say needs to be checked. The ones that are not prone to have bugs do not need not need to have hechsher, don't need to be checked at all. So when it comes to dried fruit, it really it's the same. It's really the same shaila as regular fruit, except for you have this this cool of the Rambam. So if you hold the cool of the Rambam and the Taz, so then you can rely on that. And then let's say if you forgot, you didn't think about it, and you and you bought, you purchased uh, dried fruit without without hechsher, you can rely on the Taz and the Rambam. But ideally, one should try to buy dry fruit with a heksher because they're making sure that the, the sites are uh, clean and, and, and uh, whatever HAACP certified to make sure that there's no infestation. They should be, it should be okay. And then assuming if it is, has an OU, has star K, then it would depend, uh, you know, I, probably you don't have to do anything, but it can't hurt to slice open uh, the first one, check if it has anything, and if it doesn't, then you're good to go. All right, we'll stop here. Um, why, 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 why could... Well, why does the ramen come in? Why does the ramen come in for dried fruits of the hechsher? I assume dried fruits they buy in the store aren't dried for a year. So that's the thing. I wasn't sure. Now, it used to be classically, you would put your fruits out in the sun, and yeah, you could guess a year. But now, you know, it's 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 still dried in a day. So you're saying ramen shouldn't be applicable. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the OU, the OU is promoting the OU. You should get stuff with the OU, you know, certification. It, and and the CRC said uh, depends what type of what type of thing. Look at the CRC had a very good list. If you want about dry fruits, look at the CRC list. You type in dry fruit CRC. It'll tell you wh- which fruits need to be need to have certification, which uh, which need to be checked even after certification. It has a very thorough list that will be helpful. Okay. The Ram is more for the, the alumnus of, of understanding what the Ram says. But you're right, it might not be as applicable if things don't last long. Okay, Yashakoach. <laughs>